Okay, so are there any questions uh, from your uh, lab meeting time so far? Anything that I can address before we kind of get started? Thank you so much. I don't know if we have enough red ones now, so we'll see. Yeah, we will see. Okay, so no, no questions so far? Yeah, go ahead. Would there be any way for you to um, email me this document so I could follow up? I on? sure can, yes. Yeah, no worries. I, I will, of course, need to know your name. <laughs> Give me just a minute. I'll, I'll pull up the, the original notebook first, and then I will send it to you. Okay. Okay, go ahead. Um, Julius. Um, it's, it actually ends with a... Oh, I, sorry, there's an... I, I accidentally read. I, I, why does that mean? I, I'm the first one. Okay, awesome. Julius Wachowski. Although, I don't know if my Charlotte email is working right now. I'm not exactly sure. It, it should? Okay, I'll send, I can send it to USCC as well, UNCC. Okay, so go, uh, so uh, you should get an email to your UNCC account or your Charlotte account, which are the same at this point, uh, with a link. Alrighty. So, so where we are at this point is eigenvalues and eigenvectors. And so um, I think in one section we actually already talked a little bit about uh, this idea of an eigenvector and an eigenvalue. Um, and in another section, we did not emphasize it as much. Uh, we saw in Wednesday lecture uh, this eigenvalue equation with operators, right? So we had um, this operator, SZ hat. I know I have like one good marker here. Okay, SZ hat. Okay. And so we had two different states 
uh, <clears throat> that we considered the action of this operator S Z hat on, right? We had one state which we were calling uh, chi alpha Z, and we had another state which we were calling chi beta. And does anybody remember what the result of acting on these states with S Z hat uh, was? Hi, Patricia. Yes. So on, so we have on the left hand side we have an operator and this uh, ket, this eigenket. In this particular case, it's an eigenket. On the right hand side of this, we then get a number multiplied by the same state by the same ket. So this is an eigenvalue equation with an operator on the left hand side and an eigenvalue on the right hand side, and uh, and what we've been working with are these special cats, chi alpha and chi beta, which just so happen to be uh, the eigenstates of this SZ hat operator. All right, so these are eigenstates of the SZ hat operator. And so that is uh, very special, okay? So uh, <clears throat> we shouldn't assume that any old state um, that we act on with SZ hat is going to have is going to satisfy this equation. So one of the things, sort of physically, that this represents is is what we saw. Just to remind you of our sequential, one of our sequential sturm gerlach experiments, right? So I I, I had uh, the silver atoms going in, right, and I they split into two beams, right? I had one beam which was associated with the value of z-spin of plus h-bar over 2, and one beam associated with the value minus h-bar over 2. Okay, and so what we said, <clears throat> what we remarked is that the process of measuring this observable, right, the z-component of spin, collapsed us into an eigenstate of spin. So those that were measured to have a, a z spin of h bar over 2 now right must be in an eigenstate of sz they must uh, and, and so that means essentially after the measurement we know this that the way to describe the state of these silver atoms is through the state chi alpha of z because that is the state which is associated with the value of spin of h bar over 2 and then this uh, these silver atoms after measurement must be in the state chi beta okay, of z. And, and that's because they, we have measured the value of minus h bar of 2. So now we know that they're in the state. Before they entered this apparatus, they were not in eigenstates, which is why we, split, why we saw some of the silver atoms deflect up and some of the silver atoms deflect down. Right? They were in a superposition of these two states and there was therefore some randomness over what actually occurred. Um, but now that we've made a measurement, we have basically forced some of these silver atoms to be in a state chi alpha and some of these to be in a state chi beta. And then what we did, right, is we said, okay, well, we can put some, something in front of these uh, chi beta states, right? We can put a block here, just make sure that they don't go any further. And then, <coughs> we can direct these states into another SZ box. And then what happened when we measured SZ again? Does anybody remember? We sent in like, we, we started with something like 1,000 silver atoms, and then our first outcome was that 500 of them were measured to have Z spin of H bar over two, 500 were measured to have Z spin of minus H bar over two, and then we just sort of like trapped the ones with z spin of minus h bar over 2, and we allowed this, those with z spin of plus h bar over 2 to go through another sz box. And then the outcome was what? They were all the same. They were all the same, yes. They all had plus h bar over 2. And the reason why is because now we, we have done something to our silver atoms to force them into this eigenstate. This eigenstate 
uh, has a definite value of spin. It is plus h bar over 2, of, of z spin. It has a definite value of z spin. It is plus h bar over 2. We did a slightly different version of this experiment, though, where we, we sent it through uh, a box that measured the x component of spin. And there, right, what we found is, again, that our beams split. And we had, uh, of the 500 that went in, right, 250 had plus h bar over 2 and 250 had minus h bar over 2, right? These are the same magnitudes, but these are now reflecting the x component of spin. And what this suggests is that the eigenstates of z spin are not eigenstates of x spin, but the eigenstates of z spin are, in fact, superpositions of the states of x spin. So, um, so we're going to try to um, see what those states look like um, a little bit uh, in terms of, uh, yeah. So we're going to try to see what those states look like represented as vectors. Um, and this was with operators. And so the last thing that I want to just point out on the board and remind you all really quickly before we get back into the notebook is that um, we can represent this operator as a matrix and then we can represent those kets as vectors. So the last thing that we did, right, is we built this matrix representation of our SZ operator. And that had the, 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 um, the matrix that we built look like the following. Right, so we had a factor of h bar over 2 up front. And then the matrix just was just 1, 0, 0, minus 1. Okay, and then we had Corresponding to our ket chi alpha, <clears throat> we had a column vector 1, 0. And corresponding to our state chi beta, ket chi beta, right, we had a column vector 0, 1. And I think, <laughs> I believe, that um, if I multiply this matrix, by this vector, what I get is the same vector back just multiplied by plus h bar over 2. And if I multiply this, uh, uh, this matrix by this vector, I get the same vector back just multiplied by minus h bar over 2. Right? So, those, so essentially what we have here is a sort of a matrix version of that eigenvalue equation where we have on the left-hand side our matrix, which I'm going to write explicitly and we can have uh, we can multiply this matrix by the vector representation of ket uh, chi alpha and that will just be equal to plus h bar over 2 ket chi alpha and similarly h bar over 2, 1, 0, 0, minus 1, times ket chi beta will be equal to minus h bar over 2, 0, 1. And this is, again, something which is quite special. It's not a generic feature that if I take some, some you know, random matrix and multiply some random vector, that the result is going to be exactly the same vector just multiplied by a constant. That is atypical. What is, uh, I think we discussed this a little bit in Monday Lab, and I forgot to, re to sort of emphasize it in Wednesday Lab. But does anybody remember from Monday Lab, like, what ordinarily happens when I multiply a vector by a matrix? So I'm going to kind of draw this. Let me try to draw this ket, right? So, so our, our ket chi alpha um, you know, if, if you want, you can think of it in this sort of two-dimensional kind of Cartesian space. And so I'll just I don't really have uh, good labels for these axes because it's a little funny. 
I'm just going to call this beta, this axis beta, this axis alpha hat, beta hat, alpha hat. And so chi alpha, right, just looks like a unit vector along this alpha hat direction. So if I say what I'm going to do is I'm going to take some matrix and multiply this vector chi alpha by that matrix, what should happen to that vector typically? So vectors have two properties, length, or, uh, length and direction. So if I multiply this vector by some random matrix, do you expect its length to change? Yes, probably. Do you expect its direction to change? Yes, probably. So what we typically think of matrices doing to vectors is rotating them and, uh, and stretching them or shrinking them. So they change both their length and their direction, typically speaking. Um, but this matrix is very special with respect to this particular vector. All this does, right, <clears throat> is change the magnitude by the amount h bar over 2, right? So whatever h bar over 2 is in our unit system, it, h bar has the value 1. Uh, so really what, what this operation does to ket chi alpha is it just shrinks it, right? It, it cuts its magnitude in half, but its direction is identical. And we would say the same thing, right, for uh, ket chi beta. What does it do? Well, it still points along the axis beta hat. It's just scaled by minus h bar over 2. So the result of Sz, the matrix, multiplied by this vector is to just point it along the opposite direction and shorten its magnitude by half. Right? And so that's, that's a very unusual feature. And it is by virtue of the fact that this vector is an eigenvector of this matrix with eigenvalue minus h bar over 2. This vector is an eigenvector of this matrix with eigenvalue plus h bar over 2. Okay. Um, and so when, uh, you know, we have, we have sort of picked um, these vector representations, uh, you know, with the intention that they be eigenvectors of SC. Um, because that is sort of the convention that then becomes sort of the basis for representing any spin states. So now what we're going to do is we're going to look at these other components of spin, Sx and Sy. And we're going to try to identify, well, how can I actually uh, find the eigenvectors of those uh, spin matrices, X, Sx and Sy? Um, and hopefully, at this point, you have some sense that they must not be the same. Because if they were the same, then the result of that, ex that series of experiments where I first measured Sx and then measured Sy, or, or sorry, first measured Sc and then Sx, would have been very different. Right? Knowing Sz would have guaranteed knowledge of Sx if they shared the same eigenvectors. But they don't, which is why you cannot know precisely what Sx and Sz is at the same time. All right. So uh, let's scroll down a little bit. Um, let's look at um, uh, the form of these matrices. So, so I just kind of uh, said probably in too many words uh, what is on the text of this notebook. Um, uh, and pro what's going on with my this thing? Um, <clears throat> Uh, this is, this links to a video, I think I put this in the uh, Canvas page too, um, just really nice uh, illustration of, um, you know, multiplying, uh, of vector rotations from matrices and eigenvectors and how those things are different um, by three uh, blue, one brown. Is anybody familiar with that series? It's a really great series. And so actually there's like a whole... Um, there's actually a whole Python package um, that was released based on how the animations. Uh, so that is also fun. Anyway, well, uh, let's, let's continue on. Uh, so these are the matrix forms of SX and SY. Um, it's kind of an interesting exercise 
to derive uh, the form of these uh, matrices, uh, which I'm not asking you to do now, but you maybe will do that at a later time, just as a hint. Um, but for now, all I, all I really want to do is I just want to um, use uh, Python to build SX and SY um, and uh, so times. I've got a, I'm really sorry that this keeps happening. This is 